Number 10, you're famous. Number 10, car insurance. Hey, my name is Taylor. I do music and audio for a living. And here are the expenses you should expect if you want to record music professionally. Number one, studio time. Studios often charge by the hour, by the day, or per song if you're working with a producer. Most often though, when you're starting out, you're gonna be recording by the hour or by the day. Practice well, you're gonna save yourself some money. But when you get to the studio, know that that studio time or recording time you're paying for doesn't just include the time you're actually behind the mic. It includes setup time, teardown time, time you are bouncing, mixing, every part of the process. In the studio, that's what you're paying for. So if you are gonna go late in a session, you usually have to pay more. So be prepared, if you do go over the allotted time you book, you will have to pay by the hour or the minute. Plan enough time to load out during your sessions. If you're bouncing down at the end of your session, have people load out their gear as you're listening back to your tracks. Cool? Cool. Number two, editing and tuning. The actual recording time is a very small part of the process, especially in modern music. So be aware that it takes time. It can take an hour per instrument to tune and edit very easily. It can go way past that as well. So be aware that editing and tuning can take forever and separately. So there's times where I'm working with a drummer, they're super solid, but I still need to quantize some hits and some fills, and it takes me a while per song, per instrument. So be aware of that. Tuning vocals takes forever, especially if there's harmonies and you want everything to be precise. There's faster ways to do it, but if you want that radio ready, pristine sound, be ready to cover some editing and tuning costs. Number three, mixing. Mixing is usually my favorite part of the album because it's when the song finally finds its life, when it starts to feel good in moments. You can find those in tracking, especially if you've practiced well, but in mixing is where the song really comes to life and it, it starts to show its final form and most of its final form. Mixing is usually tackled pricing wise in two different ways, either by the hour or by the song. If you're mixing by the hour, it's pretty cut and dry. If you're in the studio, that's super fun and you'll have that live feedback so you can leave with something you're really proud of. But the more ideas and the more things you try out, although awesome, will cost you more money. So budget well so you can take that time to try those cool ideas and you're not stuck with something that you're just kind of happy with. So know that if you're mixing by the hour. If you are mixing by the song, usually this comes with a fixed amount of revisions. So when I do a per song mixing deal with somebody, I usually give two or three rounds of revisions. I'll have them send me notes on the rough mixes from the session. These are tracking roughs, so it's usually just thrown together at the end of the day. I have them give me notes if there's any performance things they want me to comp or switch out as they continue to listen. Then I hit those and, and give them a first mix, which is one I really like. I usually put a lot of my flavor into it, kind of where I think it should be. Usually we'll talk about it beforehand, so I know it's like gonna match their artistic vision mostly. Um, but I'll try some weird things that I think are tasteful so we can talk about them. If they love those, if they like those, we'll usually do a couple more rounds of revisions. Um, the second mix, I feel like it's at a place, unless I say otherwise, that is super great and I think a lot of people would love. The last round, if I do a last round of mixes or another mix, those are just like those final adjustments. The style of your music can also dramatically affect the pricing of your mixing. Just know that. Number four, mastering. Mastering is another expense that a lot of bands forget about. They think it takes place in the recording, editing, mixing stage. Although, especially with today's plugins and tools, that can be the case and you can have a great mix master of your song, having that extra master or the actual master of your song is awesome if you budget for it. It is the final polish that makes the song pop on all stereo systems, you know, whether it is a phone, a car, theater, whatever you're listening in. Mastering makes sure it'll play back and sound pretty much the same at whatever volume and in whatever environment. So mastering is great if you're really going for that broad distribution. Compression, EQ, there's a lot of stuff like that that goes into it, but most of the actual like mixing and stuff is done in the mixing stage. Mastering is simply that final polish and smash of the song. Mastering is usually done at a song rate. You can pay as much as you want. You can find solid people for usually the 50 to $100 per song range. So be sure to budget for it. Number five, artwork. Artwork is pretty self-explanatory. If you're releasing to Spotify, iTunes, 
whatever, either per single or per album. Artwork is huge. A lot of times you can make something yourself on your phone that looks really solid, uh, but sometimes you need to hire a graphic designer if you don't have one in your band or if you're not one yourself. So be, keep that in mind, keep a budget in mind. Pay them well, artists talk, and if they like your music, they'll share it. So make friends, build a community. Duplication. This is becoming less and less of a thing as CDs and physical media kind of fall by the wayside. Vinyl is pretty expensive if you want to budget for it. I've seen a lot of people just raise money just to do a vinyl release and kind of do the pre-order sales. That seems to work great, but duplication is a cost to consider when you're gonna release an album or physical singles. You can, there's some really cheap ways to print CDs, to print tapes, I don't know what you do with tapes, or press vinyl. So be aware, that's a cost, budget for it. Distribution. I'm thinking online distribution. If you are going for full scale distribution, props to you, that's not most of us, great. All right, online distribution. You need to pay for it. There's TuneCore, there's CD Baby, and there is DistroKid. There's a few more, but those are the three big ones. I always use DistroKid because it's like $20 and you can upload as much music as you want for the year. There's a couple extra fees uh, if you want them to you know, upload to Shazam right away and if you want like it to track it on YouTube. But it's super slick uh, and it's by far the cheapest of the online distributors and I love it. It's a brilliant company, use them. I'll put my link below if you wanna check it out. But you know, TuneCore has some really solid options. I have heard some weird things about CD Baby. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you want to respond with why they're awesome. Uh, but I'd say go with DistroKid. There's no going wrong at this point in time. I will let you know if that changes. Oh, promotion. Promotion. Be sure you budget for getting your music out there, whether that's Facebook, Google, online ads in general, Instagram ads. Uh, make sure you're budgeting for this. Have this in mind. Try to make this, if possible, as much as your recording budget. The better you can promote it, the more people will hear it, and the more you can keep making music, usually. So that you can hire a publicist, which is usually a certain amount of money. They do work with you for a certain amount of time. Radio promotion works the similar way. Uh, budget for that, if that's the route you wanna go, you can usually hit college radio pretty quickly and then move up from there, so on and so forth. Number nine, videos. Uh, make videos, whether you're in the studio and you're just grabbing some B-roll or whatever, you know? Music videos, I think most of audio is actually visual these days, especially music, so make those videos. Find a filmmaker, if you're looking on the cheap, find a young filmmaker who wants to just shoot a cool video and let them take control. They're gonna do something way cooler than you just sitting there playing your guitar or your keyboard or rapping into a microphone. So let them do something weird for you and hopefully it all works out. Yeah, that's all I got, folks. Anyways, <laughs> those are the usual expenses to expect when you're recording in a professional environment for music. Let me know what your experiences are, how you've paid for music, how you charge for music. Let's start the conversation. I'd love to hear what you're doing. Subscribe if you want me to keep making videos. Like it if you want to give me a nice ego bump. And share it with somebody who is looking to do music, please. Thanks. Have a great day. Talk soon. Talk soon. Yeah. All right, we should probably record this next one. Number nine, we had, I forgot what we had number nine. I skipped a number. That's fine, I'll edit over it with mice or something again. Number nine, video. Number 10, video. Uh, number 10, get your mom a card if she's been listening to your music, get your dad a card. Number 10, pizza party. Number 10, you're famous. Number 10, car insurance. Number 10, a band van. Number 11, cool clothes. Number five, a change of clothes. Yeah, that's all I got, folks.